Are you in the market for an affordable, high-quality acoustic guitar? Today, we are looking at two of the most popular models available around $200. Check it out. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, make sure to visit our Teespring store link below for some custom designed t-shirts. Or you can buy something from our website. That works too. Someone actually asked that question. Can I buy guitars? Yes, mm -hmm. you can. And mm -hmm. pianos, anything else you found on the website, it's fine. So, anyways, welcome. Today we are looking at two of the most popular acoustic guitars in the market period, but particularly at a very popular price point this time of the year. What time of the year is that, Cooper? It's holiday time. It's holiday season, y'all, and everybody is looking for a guitar for that special someone that's cooped up at home wanting to learn this instrument or maybe wanting a better guitar than they have. And the most popular price point really is about the $200 market. It's kind of a, a sweet spot when you're looking at a good guitar. Now, there are lesser guitars out there that cost less money that you might find on popular e-commerce websites like <clears throat> Amazon and some others, but We've done videos about that in the past, warning you what to look for and not see and not look for in a guitar. And if you haven't seen that video up there, click that link and you'll see what we're talking about and then come back. Uh, but today we are looking at two of the most popular with good reason. And the idea here is to talk about what's great, why these are such good popular guitars and also compare them so that you can make a good informed decision about which one is right for you. Now I've got the Fender CD60S in my lap, what do you have? I have the Yamaha FG800. The FG800, which has been a perennial favorite on this channel, in our store, and in the hands of many, many out there. The FG series has been in production roughly since the 60s when Yamaha kind of invaded with their uh, acoustic guitars, and they've been phenomenal. When these were remodeled years ago, uh, it was a huge step up in terms of the features and just what you got from the sound of the guitar. And, not to be outdone, pretty shortly after that, Fender redid their entry-level acoustic guitars. And the CD60S is, in a lot of ways, very, very similar to the FG800. So we want to compare and contrast these so, so that you understand why they're similar, uh, the good things that you want to look at, but also maybe why they're different and why you might prefer one over the other. So they're both around 200 bucks, okay? Price is subject to change. Check our website, alamomusic.com. Um, they're both dreadnoughts. You've got a natural finished one. Natural finish. What which... other finishes does that come in? Um, is there a burst? Nope. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, what other finishes do they come in? Nothing. Nothing? That was, was a, a trick question. That was a trick He's question. Got me on that one. There are some in the FG series, though. I think the 820s, the 830s, that come in some other finish options. Um, and occasionally, there are going to be some limited editions that might have a vintage tint to it. But by and large, it's kind of like Henry Ford said, you can have any color as you want it, as long as it's black in an FG800. And the smaller body FS800, it's pretty much natural. And they come other options, the FGX800? Yep, you can get it with a cutaway yeah, and yeah. electronics. Same thing with this. There is a more expensive option where you can get a cutaway with electronics. Um, so these are kind of the, the, the blueprint, so to speak, of other options to come. So no electronics in either of these. Nope. No cutaway, bare bones, elect I mean, acoustic guitar, just as is. That's all you got. That's what you got. Yeah. But it's kind of the features that beginners don't often look at that make it really important to look at these over maybe some others. And in fact, let me create a very important distinction for you. If you go on our website, you're going to see a CD60 that doesn't have the S on the end. So Fender does produce a non-S version that comes with a case and it's pretty much the same price. But there's a big distinct difference between those. This has a solid top and the CD60 without the S on the end does not. That's what the S stands for. It's, you know, scrumptious. No, it stands for solid top. In this case, this is a solid spruce top. And you also have a solid spruce top. You know what these also both have? They both 
Go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, they know. both also have scallop bracing. Scallop bracing. I was going to say laminate back and sides. Uh, that's, and that's all. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So we're talking about the top, solid top with scallop bracing. That allows the top to move more. And that was the big change they did on the FG800s when they changed it from the 700 to the 800 is scallop bracing. And that just opens up the sound tremendously. Anytime you compare kind of a, a straight brace guitar with a scallop brace guitar, you'll you'll hear that. Yeah. Just kind of louder, more robust, more resonant tone because the top's moving more. And then to your point, they both have laminate back and sides. Laminate back and sides or layered back and sides, depending upon how you want to talk about it. But it's the back and sides are not solid. They're like plywood. There's multiple pieces of wood. And that's really good in a kind of beginner's guitar. Why though? Why do you think that's good in a beginner's guitar to not have solid back and sides? Well, First thing that comes to mind is price point, which anything that you're going to get all solid wood, it's going to take a huge hike in pricing. But also, um, maybe be, I don't want to say a little more uh, durable, that you yep. can maybe not super duper worry about this thing getting knocked around and stuff. What, what do you have in mind? Well, you hit it right on you know, the nail on the head. So lower price guitars are typically laminate uh, more to do with the fact that it's easier in a production environment you don't have to season the wood it's easier to work with easier to bend the sides all of that stuff um, but laminate is stronger the downside to laminate is it's not as resonant that's why you tend to prefer an all solid wood instrument uh, but the fact that it is stronger means that it's going to hold up to kind of some rough and tumble ways you can drag this out to the beach and if you you know lay it down roughly and you hit it against something, it's gonna hold up pretty well. Versus a you know solid back could very well you know split on you yeah. uh, if it's hit too hard. So that's part of it. And then also temperature and humidity. So any kind of wood instrument is subject to temperature humidity uh, swings. You know as as temperature and humidity rises or, or lowers, um, that can affect the guitar. It can swell. It can shrink. But laminate doesn't really do that, so it's very, very stable. So, you know, that is definitely the same between these guitars. They're both dreadnought body shapes, which is probably the most famous guitar body shape, right? It's definitely great for strumming, but you can really play anything on this. They both have diecast tuners. This comes in some finish options. They're very, very much alike. Yeah. Here's the big difference that I found between these. The sound's a little different, even though they're both solid top and scallop braced. I think this has a more modern sound. I think that one has a more vintage tone, kind of your yesteryear acoustic guitar. In yeah. fact, you were playing before we started, you are playing some Eric Clapton on it. Absolutely. And, and yeah. it just felt kind of right at home. It feels really good, yeah. Um, I would say, so correct me if I'm wrong, but the Yamaha Dreadnought Shape, the Fender Dreadnought Shape, every brand has kind of a different... Slight take on slight it. Slight take on it. Um, we saw it with the red labels that are from Yamaha, they're somewhat modeled after very old school 60s, 70s Yamahas. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of maybe informs the sound a little bit, kind of all of their dreadnought stuff through their lines. It does have that kind of vintage old school kind of vibe a little bit. I really enjoy that. But um, like I said on a previous video, I did have a Fender dreadnought at the very start and they do feel good and they do sound great. Um, but I think the modern vintage tone is definitely apparent, you know. Yeah, that one, it, it's kind of somewhat darker, I guess mm -hmm. you could describe it when we're talking about vintage. This one has a little bit brighter, a little bit more articulate sound, but still very, very resonant. The bigger uh, departure on these, I think, comes down to feel. Now, you spent some time playing that one. Mm -hmm. We want to switch guitars real quick yeah. since you were playing that one. I just want you to get a feel for the neck on, on the Fender instead. Yeah. It's There's different, a neck right? on there. There's definitely a neck on this one. Um, it is different. That one, I enjoyed the satin finish on the mm -hmm. neck. This one has a gloss. gloss neck that's painted to match, which is cool. It looks great. Um, but this one does have a satin finish, which just kind of feels better on acoustic to me. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I th I'm typically a fan of satin finish necks, period. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's electric guitar or it's acoustic guitar. I have some electric guitars that are finished. I don't get too bent out of shape about it. I don't think about it too much. Yeah. But if you're paying attention, typically this feels nicer. And so I think there's a point here for the Yamaha. On that one, regardless of finish, it is going to be glossed. Yeah. So on the black one, on the natural one, whatever, it's going to be glossed, which means it's going to just feel a little bit more sticky. There's some other things too, though. Does this, did this one feel a little fatter to you? It did, yeah. Is this, what, what are the carves on here, the shape? You know, it's like a modern C. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this definitely has a thinner carve to it. 
it also has a shorter scale length and it has a rounder radius. And so what we're talking about, if you're new to guitars, is the, the shape of the back of the neck that fits into the palm of your hand can have a different shape. Some are fatter, some are thinner, and that's going to affect how it feels there. But it's not just that one thing that you have to look at. There's kind of this compound of numbers that you have to take into consideration. When we're talking about scale length, we're literally talking about the measurement from the nut to the saddle, the vibrating length of the string. Now, that scale length also informs where the frets are. So something that's a longer scale, like this Yamaha, it typically is going to be a little brighter sounding. It's going to be a little louder because there's more tension on the strings. That's going to change the feel. It's going to feel a little tauter uh, against your fingers. And the frets are a little bit further apart. Now, we're talking fractions of an inch, but it matters particularly when you are trying to spread your fingers across a lot of different frets. And so you would feel that stretch and you would feel that string tension more so on this guitar than on the Fender. Mm -hmm. Also, when we talk about radius, that's actually the curvature of the fret. Now we're gonna say things like nine and a half or 12 inch or 16 inch radius, things like that. That's actually, if you had a 12 inch uh, circle and you cut a portion of it, that's the curve of the fret. So this is a flatter radius, which is more traditional acoustic mm -hmm. than that one. And so all in all, I think Fender made these decisions specifically to appeal to a beginner player, okay? So know that, that that is probably for someone who's starting out with the less tension, the rounder radius helps chord forms easier, um, and the slightly thinner neck, it's going to feel really nice, yeah. but it is going to be a little sticky. Yeah. Um, and some people, I think you and I probably both fall into this camp, we're very comfortable with an acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. This feels kind of at home. Yeah, definitely. I think there's a lot of conversation people talk about, well, that acoustic is great for an electric player. Like that's catered more towards an electric mm -hmm. player. I think you put it in the way that might be a, a little more close to the truth, which this is maybe catered towards a beginner, somebody just getting started. Because people always say, well, Taylor's great for her. It feels like you're playing electric. And they're just talking about how comfortable it is. Right. They're not talking about anything other than how comfortable the neck feels, the uh, radius, everything about it is more geared towards comfort than it is a certain type of player. So this might be a little more comfortable. It's a minuscule difference in how this is a very comfortable guitar too. It's not anything that would sway me one way or the other. I would also say, calling back to another video that we did, which was step up guitars and things that you're looking at a step up guitar. If you haven't seen that one, these do hit, I would probably say most of them, right? But when you started talking about a solid top um, and scallop bracing, they kind of fit that criteria of what we talk about when we say a step up guitar. So Yeah, the features of this guitar could serve you well for a number of years. And that's why I recommend kind of starting out here if you can. If you can't, both of these manufacturers make great guitars that are not solid top, they're all laminate design, and they're, they, you know, they're great guitars to start out with, and it'll save you a little bit of money. But I'm a big fan of paying just a little bit and finding a little bit more value in the instrument. I started off with a really bad classical guitar, we've talked about that, but a friend of mine, Doyette, he lent me a Yamaha acoustic guitar, kind of you know, indefinitely, until I gave yeah. it back to him. And that's what I really spent the majority of my time learning on, once I had that guitar, and it was just a fantastic guitar. My sister-in-law has had Yamaha guitars for years, and they just still sound it and play great. And I think Fender has really upped its game with its acoustic guitars, particularly with the CD60S. Mm -hmm. And so it really comes down to this on these two guitars. If you're shopping for these for yourself or for someone else, here's the advice I'm going to give you. They sound different. We're going to play these so that you can hear for yourself. This one, in my ear, sounds a little bit more robust got a little bit of a fuller low end to it. The Fender sounds very articulate, very sparkly in a way, um, but they both sound great in their own way. The bigger deciding factor might come down to the feel, particularly if you're buying this for someone else. Someone who might be concerned about guitar and, and that break-in period developing the calluses and all of that, the pain that you, you basically have to go through, there's no shortcuts. If you're concerned about that, you might look at a guitar that has any guitar, but this one included, that has shorter scale length, rounder radius, thinner neck, 
those things that will help that feel for someone who's starting out or maybe someone who's played a long time and you've reached a point in your life where you just need kind of some lighter, softer action on your fingers. But if you're wanting kind of a big, bold, strumming guitar and you're okay with putting the time work and you really like that nice satin finish, then I would say that you'd probably gravitate to this one instead. So that's the feel aspect. We're going to play them both for you now so you can get an idea of what they sound like. So check it out. So there you have it. Great comparison between the Yamaha FG800 and the Fender CD60S. Now we've looked at these as two of the most popular models, but you should know that these guitars are available in a slightly different model number with a different body shape. We mentioned the FS version, which is a folk or concert uh, version of this guitar. Um, and then there's the CC version, which is, again is a smaller version of the CD60S. I think they even have a parlor version now that's come out that's even smaller uh, if you like small body guitars. And then you mentioned acoustic electric versions. Yep. So there's the FGX800. Which doesn't C necessarily add s such an exorbitant cost. It right. might be worth looking into, um, especially if you want to plug in, start playing some shows. Well, I'll put it this way. This is how I always tell people when they ask, should I get this one or that one? If you think you're going to plug in your guitar, the price difference of going from either of these to the acoustic electric model with a cutaway is less than buying an aftermarket pickup and trying to have it installed in either of these guitars. Yeah. So that should be the deciding factor. If you want a pickup, buy a, an inexpensive guitar or on a more affordable guitar that has one in it because a, a good quality aftermarket pickup is at least 200 bucks typically. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, both guitars, they have that as an option, but otherwise it's, it's all the same bones. Yeah.
Very cool. Very nicely made guitars. And uh, we'll cover all the bases for anybody that's either just getting started or looking for that step up guitar. Or if you're trying to inspire a family member or a friend and you want to buy them a guitar, this they're right at that sweet spot of being affordable enough, but nice enough to where you're going to want to keep playing them. They're not going to be uncomfortable in any anyway. So yeah, yeah, definitely good. So hopefully this helped you sort through at least these two that again are extremely popular at this price point. If you'd like more information about it, go to our website, alamomusic.com. You can pull up the specs for these guitars and other guitars like them. You can also chat live with one of our associates online who can help you sort through all of the questions that you might have, whether you're buying a guitar for yourself or for someone else. And of course, if you're new to this channel, this is what we do. We kind of try to break it down and help you make the best decision to find the right guitar to suit your needs. So if you're new, make sure you subscribe, you turn on notifications, you like the videos. Our idea is that at the end of the day, the very best guitar in the world... It's the one that you get for the holidays. <laughs> and that you then make music on. That's what we want to help you do. So make sure that you stick around with us. We'll keep coming back for more. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.